Okay, just to hear me out, it's not that great. It looks incredible. There are so many fun things in the movie, but when it comes to the actual function of filmmaking and all the things that you expect from filmmaking, it's not very good. Stanley Kubrick, one of the greatest film directors of all time, did not really understand character or psychology. That's not what he was really interested in. He tried to do a hell of a lot more of that in what his last movie, in Eyes Wide Shut. There was more of an interest in character and psychology. But in his earlier stuff, he just it just wasn't of interest to him. <laughs> so The Shining, obviously, directed by Stanley Kubrick, starring Shelley Duvall, Jack Nicholson, uh, that kid, and a guy in a, a pig outfit. It has amazing music, amazing atmosphere. It looks so, so good. This is a movie that I used to turn on what, uh, while I was going to sleep for, like, months. I would just turn it on. There was something about how quiet the beginning is and the music and it was just like comforting for some reason. I don't know. But the set design, oh my god, there are just aspects of the way that things are built and the colors that are used that I just, I've remembered forever. But character-wise, it is pretty horrendous. <laughs> like, what are, what is the character of the main characters and what is their arc? And what's the psychology behind it? I mean, the only thing that we have is Jack Torrance is an alcoholic. Do we knew, know much of his his history, why he is, what he struggles with, what he's interested in or not interested in? He just says a handful of things that speak to those questions, and then he turns into a total monster to, <laughs> when it comes to his family. Like, the turn is so harsh that he's just like, oh yeah, I love my family, take care of him, I'm a hard worker. And then all of a sudden, he's like cursing and telling Shelley Duvall to get the F out of here and all that. Now, I know, and I, I've heard, I've read the stories about how Stanley Kubrick and Jack Nicholson were really trying to mess with Shelley Duvall. And looking at her now, they really succeeded. But a lot of it, the point was maybe to create a realistic situation where she feels absolutely horrendous about everything and terrified and get that to come across on the film. So they didn't think to actually have a devolution of Jack Nicholson's character over time or carefully so that we're worried about how far he's going to go because they could have had a good relationship and it was quality and healthy and all that but from the very beginning he's very dismissive and harsh with her until he gets to be just a complete asshole <laughs> like it, there's no in between there's no build up to it there's no structure to the way that their relationship works itself out over time there's nothing like that and most of the time when he's talking to his son or with his son, uh, you know, he has a couple sentences shared with him. And then he's already going nuts in the hotel. So the, it's just, it's not good. It's not good storytelling. I know there was a TV movie version of The Shining that was made where they make more of an effort to exhibit character instead of just having the setting be the character. And I wouldn't go so far as to say that it was better. I just think that it does that aspect of the storytelling better. Now, in general, I despise Stephen King. I think the guy is unbelievably overrated. He's just the fast food version of an author. You know, it's like if you eat McDonald's. I, mean, I eat McDonald's on occasion. I know what it tastes like. I know how vacuous it is when it comes to nutrients. But Stephen King is the same thing. There's nothing really to the books. He's got a handful of ideas and he meshes genres. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Speaking of, I am going to do the It movie. So I will speak more on that later. But The Shining just does not have a concept of creating characters and having them go through things as the characters you know you've got the moment where jack torrance goes into the empty bar and talks to the non-existent ghost bartender and gets a drink and they just joke a little bit back and forth and the bartender's like you know kill your family or whatever but so it's <laughs> There's just not much to any of the characters. And Shelley Duvall, what is her arc? What, what are the particulars of her psychology? There's nothing. It's just that she wants to go help her husband out because she feels like that's what she's supposed to do. And she looks after her son. And that is pretty much the extent of it. When she's talking with the therapist early on, she's trying to be coy and defensive about the way her husband acts, but why? You know, what's the point? You just have to read a whole bunch of extra contextual psychological clues into each one of the characters to get anything out of them. Like, what was the point of, uh, there's the naked lady in the bathtub who's actually a disgusting old lady, uh, which is harsh and ageist. <laughs> they should have used, you know, uh, a young lady for the attractive one and an ugly young lady <laughs> for the non-attractive one. That should have been how it's done. To avoid ageism. 
But what what psychologically is a more significant aspect of that situation, of that having happened, of there being a room that's off limits that they can't get into or that it has all the scary stuff in it, of there being a secondary character who shows up to try to help people, of the fact that he gets locked into the pantry or that she uses a bat to <laughs> to hit him down the stairs, what is it, or that they have to use a snow machine thing to get out. What is the significance of any of those things or the maze at the center? Psychologically, what does any of that mean? Like I said, Eyes Wide Shut, extremely robust in the idea of a person's psychology and exploring it and trying to understand it and having the story that's being shown on screen be representative of that psychological turmoil and those ideas. Eyes Wide Shut does that in an excellent way. The Shining doesn't have an interest in any of those things. It doesn't explore any of those things. If I'm wrong, please, please describe it for me because it's. I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. I just think it, it does not have any concept of anything related to character or psychology. And I think that's what most of Stanley Kubrick's movies are. They're gorgeous paintings that don't care about humans. <laughs> don't care about the internals of the way humans function. Which is leaving out an entire frontier of of storytelling and it makes it really frustrating so just to get it out uh, my favorite moments i mean the the pig guy (laughs) at the end has always made me laugh and creeped out and scared in some way from the very first time i ever saw this movie i i love that that moment is in there the blood elevator thing looks incredible. The sound of Danny when he's riding through the hotel and he'll go on carpet and then hard floor and carpet and hard floor. Just the sound of that while you're watching him is fantastic. I know part of this was they had just invented a steady cam that you could carry along. And so Stanley Kubrick wanted to use that in this movie. And that was one of the major shots that he got because there was a steady cam now that you could follow around, but it would stay steady, not be shaking all over the place. And so they did dozens of takes of, of just Danny riding through with the camera following him. Obviously, there are the iconic moments like the twins who were, those were uh, Kubrick's daughters, right? But the twins is saying their creepy stuff. I mean, incredible. So iconic. The axe through the wall. When when he's swinging the axe and the camera is following it into the wall over and over again. Looks gorgeous. Him sticking his face through, obviously. There were so many iconic visuals. And just, uh, you know, one thing that I absolutely love about the beginning of the movie is the tracking shots when they'd be walking through, like, the lobby area. And the space that was between them and the camera. There was something about that that was just so interesting and meaningful well not necessarily meaningful but it was just really fun to look at i really enjoyed that part of it the maze looked great (laughs) jack nicholson's performance is awesome even if it is not informed by being an actual human you know it's still really awesome to watch the fact that this thing has been parodied to infinity and beyond is incredible this is one thing that i've been thinking about recently though is that if you watch things now If there are younger people who watch it now and see parodies of The Shining and have never seen The Shining, that's something that's going to be more and more common as time goes on. And it's weird that we're going to have these epochs where certain references are going to be significant. And it's going to be like a bell curve where it keeps bouncing up and down. Where the kinds of cultural references generationally are going to cluster around the center and so more people are going to understand it and fall off at the tail ends. And you're going to have that with every cultural reference. When I was a kid, I just thought certain things like, you know, Terminator 2. I thought that would always be relevant. If you have a reference of Terminator 2 or I'll Be Back, it's always going to be relevant. Kids are always going to know what that comes from. But it's not, definitely not necessarily the case anymore. We're getting so much distance now between movies that look really good and movies of today, which look maybe a little better, but they still have similar colors and resolution to movies that happened 30 years ago. So it's like uh, we're living this weird era where we're not going to have these cinematic distinctions anymore. And it's all going to feel like it it blends together. It's so strange. But anyway, yeah, The Shining is a great movie undeniably, but it is something that has a very hollow psychological and character core. Even when it comes to the descent into madness, is that really undertaken in this movie in a way that's that's trying to depict this in an artistic way? Or is it just a mechanism to get to the point of him doing the killing? Because yeah, he goes up to the non-existent bartender and writes uh you know all work and no play makes jack a dull boy a thousand times or whatever but what does any of that really mean anything psychologically was any of that set up really when it comes to the character Uh, i i just don't think there are any real connections 
when it comes to the characters, the arcs of the characters, or the psychology of the characters, I don't think there was any interest in developing those things where that can be, uh, you know, that's an additional dimension of storytelling that was just lost completely uh, when it comes to Stanley Kubrick, at least in this movie. So anyway, yeah, (laughs) that is uh, The Shining. I'm going to watch it again this holiday season because uh, it's something that was very significant to me as a kid. And we'll always cherish it for many reasons. But can't wait to get deep into October and watch so many damn scary movies. It's going to be crazy. Hope all is well. Yeah, I think that's about it. All right, bye.